So it's September. Fall is almost here, which means we are in the thick of the silicon release season, which also typically means we are in the thick of the rumor mill season. And right about now, it typically goes into overdrive, releasing cool details, but also, of course, a lot of trash. And I don't blame a lot of the people watching this. It can be hard to separate the good from the bad rumors, especially if you're just browsing rumor websites for fun. But that's what I want to talk about today, confirming, adding clarity to, or outright debunking a ton of recent Intel, AMD, NVIDIA rumors. And actually, the first rumor I want to start with is the one involving AMD, because I think it's one of the most important ones for knowing what you should buy this fall. And it's also one of the quickest ones to go through. So I've been getting a lot of DMs about how expensive AM5 motherboards are looking to be, with some people gasping at pages like this that shows eye-watering pricing. But before I get into what I believe you should expect out of AM5 pricing, I do feel like I'm gonna have to remind everyone, once again, as I've done this several times this year, what B550 pricing looked like years ago when it first launched. There's no way around it. B550 was way more expensive than it is now. And as far as I have seen and already leaked in previous videos, AM5 pricing is looking to be roughly the same as AM4 pricing when AM4 first launch. The only difference basically being that AM5 motherboards seem to have a higher ceiling and a lower floor in pricing. They'll get a little cheaper than the cheapest AM4 motherboards eventually because, well, quite literally, B650 and X670 motherboards are cheaper to make than X570 and B550 motherboards, but also some of them require really cutting edge and just expensive components to get the cutting edge IO that is possible if you really go for it with one of these AM5 motherboards. So again, what I've already leaked isn't changing. You should expect similar pricing with some more expensive models than what we had before, but also some cheaper models than what we had before. Well, eventually. Underline that word, eventually. Because, and now I'll put this quote on screen, from what I'm hearing, the first shipments of motherboards just have an artificial price increase added on top for the early adopters. Now, I have some exact numbers that I've been told for the first sell-through before they consider going to the pricing that I had available to me in the spec sheets I used to make that previous leak. But at least at first, everything I said in that previous leak, you're going to want to add a little more on top of it. And then they're going to see how easily that sells through. And, well, I don't really know what to tell you guys. This is an early adopter tax. And while I don't have data points from every motherboard manufacturer for this early milking of motherboard pricing, I do have it from a few, but one of them I don't have it from specifically is MSI. And so I feel comfortable showing some of their official pricing on their website because, well, even if I don't have exact pricing updated from an MSI source right now, what I'm seeing here it just looks like they added about 20 to 30% to it. And it's in line with how it should be priced against competition from other board manufacturers I do have updated pricing sheets from. So I guess that's all I really have to say about this. That insane pricing you see from MSI, yeah, it's not there because it needs to be. They're milking the first one to two months of sales or something because they they know they can. And just like B550 used to be crazy expensive, this is, for the most part, temporary. And if you really want the best price performance, you should wait until late October or, if anything, let's be honest, quarter one, once the holiday rush and gouging is over. And like I covered in a recent Loose Ends, it's not like Intel is going to be an angel with their motherboard pricing this fall either. And I covered this in a recent Loose Ends, but I just want to recap it really quickly here today. So basically, there's going to be just an extra 20 to 30% added on top. Like again, look at that MSI page. One of those motherboards should be closer to $400, and that other one should probably be closer to $500. And, and that's really what you should expect. X670 Extreme, once the milking is over, should really be closer to like $300 to $500, basically being the top tier Z690 pricing a lot of people have started to just accept. And then you should expect X670 Non-Extreme to be 
you know, 200 to $350, roughly speaking, which is about what you should also expect out of Z790 pricing. I'm told Z790 pricing is just pretty much a flat 20% price increase over Z690. And then you should expect B650 Extreme to be about the same price as what Z690 is, and B650 to be where the cheaper Z690s are now, and a little cheaper than those two at the very bottom on the motherboards that really skimp on io but again allow you to get an am5 motherboard that's as cheap as a lot of am4 motherboards are now if not cheaper now of course the pricing of upcoming motherboard platforms isn't the only thing i talked about in that recent loose ends i also talked about when you can buy raptor lake which i said october 22nd and well since then a lot of websites have been putting out other dates dangerously close to what i said and I feel like I'm going to have a lot more visibility on exactly when each SKU, each motherboard platform launches from Intel in about a week from now. But before then, I have reached out to a bunch of people and I just thought you guys should see what the early feedback already is. So if we throw these quotes on screen, one of my best sources, someone I know personally, someone I met, someone I talked to on the phone all the time, this person at Intel tells me that October 17th through the 22nd is when the launch is currently planned, but outside of that, people should not be obsessing over exact dates. That's the week Raptor Lake is coming out. Intel, I am told, does want to pull it up if they can, but right now they're not sure. It all depends on logistics when things arrive in certain countries, if they feel like reviewers have gotten enough time. But just just know that the third week of October is when Raptor Lake is supposed to come out. And of course, can be pushed back a little or moved up a little if there's availability or the need to do that. Now, a second source tells me that they are planning to launch Raptor Lake products on October 22nd. So there it is, that October 22nd day again. A third source tells me that Raptor Lake launches October 22nd, but this person was not 100% sure. Another source tells me that at the very least, it sounds like it's the second half of the third week of October. And then another source tells me third week of October. Actually, this person told me something interesting that one of the main reasons Raptor Lake is launching in the second half of October, technically instead of the first half, is that they want to have support for 64 gigabyte DIMMs of DDR5. And I was specifically told that they weren't sure if they'd be able to support this. I reached out to someone else at Intel that also backed up that this was something they were haggling over supporting, but they weren't sure if it'd be ready for launch. Basically, what's interesting here is Intel sounds like they were willing to push back the uh, launch of Raptor Lake a few weeks if it means they can support a higher DDR5 capacity than Zen 4 officially because they know the Vcash model is coming and they want to be able to say at Raptor Lake's launch, hey, 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 we know they may have the Vcash models coming, but let's be honest, all these are going to be about equal at gaming anyways, and we're going to support HEDT level amounts of RAM. So buy Raptor Lake if you're a creator and know that you can still game well. That was an interesting tidbit that I gathered there. But again, the overall summary basically is over a month from now, about mm, three and a half weeks after Zen 4 is out, is when you should expect to be able to buy Raptor Lake in a Z790 motherboard. Could it move up a bit? Yes. Could it be pushed back a bit? Yes. But nobody says it's coming after October 22nd as of now. And so I still think that's the date you should take to the bank for planning when you can get a Raptor Lake CPU and start your new build reliably. And, well, again, I brought up that loose sense twice. There was something else that was touched on out of the blue that I wasn't expecting to cover that episode, and that was rumblings that I was asked live on air about if Intel was rebranding Alder Lake for some Raptor Lake models. And, yeah, I did an investigation on this, and I've actually done an investigation on a lot of recent NVIDIA rumors that, well, you guys are going to want to see because... A lot of the stuff you're being told is just completely false. But I'm going to have to get to that after a word from a sponsor. Do you know everything? Congratulations if you do, because I do not. There's always so much more to learn or even just brush up on before you forget it. And honestly, the same goes for my dog, Reese here. She doesn't understand a lot of things. Heck, it usually takes her several tries to figure out how to go down a slide. Both of us could probably use a little more knowledge from Brilliant. Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant uses fun, hands-on, or pause-on courses that have been tailored to keep you engaged so you can learn STEM courses 
choices in an effective way. Whether you want to do things like brush up on everyday mathematics you are getting a little rusty in, or learn the fundamentals of computer science for the first time, Brilliant can keep you sharp or help you develop new skills for your career. And best of all, Brilliant is free to start, and it's waiting for you. Join the over 11 million people already learning on Brilliant today with a special offer just for Moore's Law is Dead listeners. Head to Brilliant.org slash Moore's Law is Dead to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners get 20% off an annual membership. Clicking on this link shows support for the channel and directly helps us. And it costs you nothing to do. Get started for free at Brilliant today. So like I alluded to before the sponsor break, on a recent Loose Ends, I was asked live on air if Intel was rebranding Alder Lake i5s into 13th gen. And I asked a source live on air, hey, is that true? To which the person told me that i5s and up are Raptor Lake and then i3s and down are going to be rebranded Alder Lake. And I was a little confused about what that meant. I didn't really see a lot of the recent Intel rumors, but I left it at that. Now, since then, I've done a lot more investigation on this to make sure I know what's going on and why so many people are asking me about this. And, well, I've gotten to the bottom of it. And actually, it's pretty interesting what Intel is deciding to do with 13th gen segmentation. Or really, the interesting parts are why they're deciding to do it. First, let me take a step back here. It is true that over a year ago, I was the first to leak big details about Raptor Lake. And it wasn't really, though, until the past few months that I started leaking details about how Raptor Lake would be segmented, especially the part, which is important to what we're talking about today, that the i5 non-K models should be six big cores in four little cores. Technically, the first person to leak that was Adored TV last year, who talked about how there would be three different core configurations designed for Raptor Lake. There'd be an 8 plus 16 big, an 8 plus 8 middle, and a 6 plus 0 little configuration. And he claimed that based on the information he was given, which looking at those charts, I don't think that he made that up or fabricated it. I think it was correct as of the time that he was told the 8 plus 16 and 8 plus 8 configurations would both be cut down based on yields to make all of the different i5 models and that basically all i5s would be based on a new Raptor Lake architecture. But even back then, it looks like the i3s probably wouldn't have been. But as of recently, now that I've had time to look around, Igor from Igor's Labs and friend of the show recently leaked a set of slides I have no reason to believe isn't 100% legit that talks about only i5K models and up having the increased L2 and L3 cache that Raptor Lake brings over Alder Lake, which is very important. You see, if it just said L3 cache, I'd go, "Eh, maybe there's something going on where they're disabling part of the L3. But the fact that the L2 cache is limited to i5K and up I don't think you just disable parts of L2 cache. So that tells you that it's very likely that, well, really only one of two things could be true. Either they are rebranding Alder Lake into Raptor Lake, which then I was wondering, well, but if they're using 6 plus 4 for the i5 non-Ks, what are they doing with the full 8 plus 8 Alder Lake yields? Uh, Or they just designed that middle 8 plus 8 die to have less cash to save on die space. But the thing is, I only think that would really save about 10% of the die space. And that doesn't, Well, that doesn't really make sense to me. And then after reaching out to some sources, well, all was revealed. One source got back to me who works with Intel and said that he is 100% sure that everything below the i5 is rebranded Alder Lake, but he does not know what's going on with that i5-13400F that WCCF Tech is alleging has the exact same cache configuration as an i5-12600K. And then another source Well, another source really got me what I needed who works at Intel. This individual told me that there was, there was an 8 plus 8 Raptor Lake middle configuration to be used with some of the i7 SKUs and most of the i5 SKUs as Adore TV explained last year. But Alder Lake has not sold as well as Intel expected. Intel management thought if Alder Lake took back the crown, even if it lost efficiency in some scenarios, that because of their brand name, everyone would just jump right back on the Intel bandwagon and they wouldn't be able to keep Alder Lake in stock unless they made a mountain of CPUs. But, well, Intel really has underestimated what Ryzen mindshare is at these days and Alder Lake, frankly, has not sold as well 
as they thought it would. And so at least at first, they are planning to just disable whatever's left over of Alder Lake dies starting in about November and rebrand them as 13th gen for the i5 non-K and lower to get rid of old stock. Now, what's interesting is I was told that there are still talks going on about releasing the 8 plus 8 Raptor Lake configuration eventually, but it still has not been validated. And as of right now, there's no proof it's coming out. And if it is, it's certainly not coming out until like probably late quarter one or later. So yeah, here's what it sounds like is going on. Intel thought Alder Lake would sell crazy well. They were planning to have the i5 non-K 13th gens use Raptor Lake, but Alder Lake, because it didn't sell well, they need to do something with this. They cannot get rid of Alder Lake stock fast enough, and they know that they need a new lineup to compete with Zen 4. So they're just going to take the dies that haven't been sold yet and packaged as Alder Lake, set them aside, and then whatever's left over, that's going to be the initial launch of the non-KI5s, which also allows Intel to launch those non-KI5s early. And now eventually, if they start selling through, they may validate and launch the Raptor Lake variants. I don't know what they'll do, if they'll add like a, a five to the ending of the name to denote that this is the Raptor Lake edition. But at least right now, yeah, the initial non-KI5s will be rebranded Alder Lakes that they couldn't sell this year. And all right then, so let's recap what I've talked about today. I have confirmed which 13th gen SKUs on desktop are going to be rebranded Alder Lake. I've talked about when you can expect to get Raptor Lake CPUs in October. And I've also talked about the pricing of some Intel motherboards and the pricing you should expect for AM5 motherboards in September and October. Now, I said that that AM5 leak in the beginning that may be the most important one. And for a lot of you watching, it will be because, well, that just tells you exactly what's going on with pricing. And if money means a lot to you, you should probably wait. But at the same time, I actually think this last part of the video may be the most important part of the video. And well, I'm going to bring him up again, Adored TV. But 13 months ago, he started talking about Aerolite graphics. And then recently, a mysterious Twitter channel popped up claiming Arrow Lake is reducing execution unit counts. Now, that's a really specific thing to claim, and there's only a handful of contacts at Intel I know who can answer that. Some of them that don't like to answer a lot of insider information. But I promised one of them I wouldn't use it for a big leak. All I needed to know was that tweet bullshit, because I had some suspicions about that channel. The guy confirmed to me, yeah, he wasn't willing to give me some detail, a lot of details. I will say, Arrow Lake sounds a little different than what people are expecting for its graphics, but I'll leave it at that. But the point is, that tweet, that tweet from FCL, from Qubit Leaks, that tweet is bullshit. And in fact, that entire Twitter account is bullshit. I'm really not kidding. This person, FCL, Qubit Leaks, everything that comes out of here, from the 4060 Ti to the 4060 stuff to that absolutely insane chart that really was no more legitimate looking than me sketching some crap on a napkin to this half-finished model of an AMV or graphics card. All of that was fake. Qubit Leaks FCL, this is someone who goes by another handle online, QXE, who has been bragging on various discords about how stupid tech outlets are for covering his fake leaks and how stupid people are for talking about them in other discords. And, well, I saw that Arrow Lake leak, and I was like, this is when I'm sure this account seems fake, because that doesn't seem true to me. And before a little bit before that, and since then, me and Moore's Law's Deck contributors have been hunting down everywhere we could to dig up information proving that account is fake. And, yeah, we have. Besides QXE literally bragging that he's FCL, we also have DMs from the FCL account confirming that he is QXE. So it's open and shut. That account is an account that's going by other names online and bragging in discords about how stupid people are for believing the fake leaks. And that account itself also confirmed that it's run by QXE. And I guess I'll just throw this message first to QXE. I kind of actually get why you did it, man. I don't know what's been going on recently in this community because I, I, I do think a lot of blame is needed in multiple directions here. A lot of Twitter leakers, I don't want to name names, that I used to read 
consider as reliable have been tweeting more and more erratic things, jumping between different claims back and forth more and more and more in some attempt to get more clicks every day. Whereas I feel like a lot of these Twitter leakers used to tweet every so often and always be accurate. And the reason they were accurate for a while is the reason I thought channels like WCCF Tech and video cards were covering them. Copite 7 Kimmy, for example, took months, if not to my memory, years to build up the credibility to get quoted often at tech outlets. Well, lately, it seems like all he fucking needed was a few hundred followers and a Pokemon picture in his profile. So... Yeah, QXE, I get why you do it, and I do know from having some of my contributors talk to him that he wanted to unmask this eventually. But I will say, ma'am, I could not wait until after GTC. I'm sorry. Before GTC, before Lovelace is unveiled, everyone needs to start taking a step back and remembering that when you see a leak in an online channel, even if it's mine, there should be at least one grain of salt taken and that the people that write these articles should be swallowing a whole salt shaker before they decide if this is worth covering over the other leaks many other channels that put so much effort into getting accurately well until they write an article about the ones that might actually be accurate because something has happened to quality recently and it's not to say it was ever high i guess but This cannot be where this community heads, where we start discussing just incomplete charts that haven't even labeled what's being benchmarked as much as other channels that have pictures of graphics cards they're leaking. Or it just, this had to be unmasked. I had to do this. I'll be honest, I laughed a little bit when QXC was doing it, but eventually I just couldn't let this stand any longer. And so, sorry if I unmasked this early, man, but... It was getting bad, and this community, I think, needs to learn some lessons before, not after Lovelace is revealed. And so, yeah, unfortunately, the part of the video talking about recent NVIDIA leaks was mostly debunking the majority of the ones I've seen people talking about recently. And I could say more, but I I don't really think I should. I made it clear which leaks were fake. And I'm going to leave it up to the websites themselves to correct the errors, hopefully, and the community to hopefully gain a bit of cynicism and skepticism again about buying into every single thing that's posted. It doesn't really benefit me to say that either. I I love tons of views and clicks on everything I do, but if my bad leaks were to be covered as often as my good leaks, that would just create a spiral where it really just destroys this community. And it's a community that my business is based around. So at the end of the day, it isn't bad for me to let this go. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry if this part of the video felt a little rushed. I actually have a dog birthday to attend as well, Reese's had a really hard year battling cancer. And so I honestly don't know if she'll have another birthday. So I do need to take off early today and cut this video a little short without more elaboration because I, I think she deserves it. But so that's what that's all I'm going to cover today. I actually think it was quite a lot. And I'll just remind everybody, you know, from what I'm seeing, over half of you aren't subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Please double check that you subscribe and ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming videos from this channel. There's going to be a mountain of content through September and October as all of these products come out. Then also consider supporting us on the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon, where you'll get access to Broken Silicon Early, the ability to submit questions to guests and me and Dan on Broken Silicon, and exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink, one's coming out right about now about how the community feels about AMD versus NVIDIA competition. Hot right before RDNA 3 and Lovelace launch. That's there just for patrons. But otherwise, to everyone else, please stay frosty. And thank you for watching.